Hello! In this short video, I will give you some important information on our compact electroplating machine and I will also show you how to use it. But, safety first, please remember to wear the rubber gloves, the protective eyewear and the protective lab coat to protect yourself from harmful chemicals. So, let's get started. Our compact electroplating machine is ideal for those who want to electroplate such objects as rings, earrings and pendants due to the size of the tanks, which is 50 milliliters each. Also, this machine is very good for those who want to plate with such chemicals as gold, silver, chrome, nickel, platinum, rhodium and others. Our machine has three extra functions which are stripping plating option, air agitation option and the solution heating option. All of those will be discussed in detail afterwards. Same as the majority of machines available on the market, our compact electroplating machine supports up to 12 volts power and it also has an adjustable power control which you can see here. Regarding the current it can go up to 4 amperes maximum for a short period of time. However, if you want your current to be stable continuously during the process, you will need to set it to 3 amperes maximum. Please make sure that before you put the plug into the socket, you turn the power control to the furthermost left position anti-clockwise to ensure that there is no power supply. Okay, so let's switch the machine on. Please also take into account that there is no additional switch to turn the machine on and off. This is to ensure your own safety and to prevent any short circuits in cases of any leakage inside the machine. When the machine is not in use, you will need to unplug it from the socket. As soon as the plug is inserted into the socket, this machine is ready to be used. Here on the digital screen you can see the power at the top and the current at the bottom. The power is regulated by this adjustable power control. You can see that the power is changing. Let me return it back to zero. The current is regulated automatically depending on the power supply and also depending on the distance between the object and the anode when those are in the solution in the tank. If you can see the power figure changing even though you're not electroplating at the moment and there is no object in the solution and your power regulator is set to the furthermost left position please do not worry, this is normal. On the right hand side you can see a 10 turns power controller which can make up to 10 turns to enable you to get a more accurate power reading. On the left hand side you can see a stripping plating switch. When it is in a plating position you can electroplate your object. When it is in a stripping position you will remove the top layer from your object. This is used in cases when you want to replate your object with some different material. Here is the air agitation pipe which is used to mix up the solutions and to improve the quality of plating. It is also known to prolong the lifetime of your solutions. At the end of the pipe there are micro holes through which the compressed air is entering the solution and mixes it up thoroughly. As soon as the machine is switched on, the air agitation system starts working and it only stops when you unplug the machine from the socket. To improve the quality of plating and also to speed up the electroplating process, you will need to use the solution heating option available with this machine. To do this, you will need to remove the metal rods like so and to remove any of the tanks
and also to make sure that the rubber plug in the drainage hole is set tightly so that there is no leakage of the water and then you pour 200 milliliters of boiling water into the vacated hole like this and then you can put your tank back to its place now you can pour your solutions of choice into the tanks usually but not necessarily the left tank is used for the cleaning solution to clean your object the middle tank is used for the tap water in order to rinse off any remains of the cleaning solution before you electroplate your object and the right tank is used for your plating solution however please bear in mind that this doesn't have to be that way you can use them in any order and you can also use all three of them for different plating solutions as long as you have your own separate tank with water next to your machine. Please remember to wait for about 5 to 10 minutes to ensure your solutions in the tanks warm up to about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. This will speed up the reactions in the tank. Boiling water has to be replaced every 30 minutes because it will be cooling down. But please do not worry, this is enough time as an average plating process takes approximately 1 minute. In order to renew the boiling water inside the machine, you will need to do the following. Remove any of the tanks. Okay. Lift the machine, put any bowl you can find and remove the rubber plug from the drainage hole. Tilt your machine, you can see that the water is leaking out. Okay. Put the rubber plug back in its place. You can twist it a bit to make sure that it goes in tightly and then you pour another 200 milliliters of boiling water into your machine. And you put your tank back in its place. Now we can pour our solutions into the tanks. This is our cleaning solution. Here is our water for rinsing. And here is our plating solution. Now we can move our rods back into place. And we put a red positive crocodile connector to the top rod and the black negative to the bottom. And now we can attach our anodes to the rods. It is really important which anodes you choose for your process because the stainless steel anode is used for electrocleaning process, silver and gold plating, the copper anode is used for copper plating, nickel anode is used for nickel plating, platinized titanium anode is used for rhodium plating and peroxide lead anode is used for chrome plating. So we put our stainless steel anode into the cleaning solution and our copper anode into our plating solution. Now we need to prepare our object for the electroplating process. To do this I will clean it with the alcohol.
and usually we use thin wires made of copper or aluminium to attach the object to the rod. So you could use something like this and just wrap it around a few times in some way which is more comfortable for you. But for our purposes today, I will use a crocodile connector because it will be easier with this exact object. And I will attach to the bottom rod our object. And I will set power to between 6 and 10 volts. I will just set it to 8 and I will put the agitation pipe into the tank. And you can see that there is a process going on, there are bubbles, so I will just leave it there for a few minutes. So now a few minutes passed, so our cleaning process should be done. And I'm just turning off the power and I'm taking my object out and rinsing it in the tank with water. Now I will just rinse our agitation pipe and I will put it into our solution. And now I can put our object into our plating solution and leave it there for about 15 to 20 seconds under the power So 15 seconds passed, let's just see if we have any result here, and yes we do. You can see that the color has changed and we have a copper plated tip of our object. We have left our object in the solution for approximately 15 seconds and we have used a power of about 2.5 volts for our object. However, please take into account that these factors depend on the material your object is made of and also on the surface area of your object. So you will need to experiment with each object you are plating to find out what are the perfect conditions for it meaning that you will need to experiment with the power and the time you leave your object in the solution for. Now our electroplating process is finished, so we can rinse our agitation pipe and switch the machine off. And to finish off our tutorial, here are a few useful tips. Always remember to wear your protective eyewear and the gloves. Never touch any chemicals and your object to be plated with your bare hands. If you need to, use tweezers. If you want to electroplate an object which is a non-metal, you will need to cover it with a conductive paint first. If you want your end product to have a mirror polished look, you will need to polish the object before the chemical cleaning process. Some metal types, such as stainless steel and aluminium, need to undergo additional chemical treatment before the electroplating process, otherwise they will just not get electroplated. During the electroplating process, it is very important to make sure that the object is not in contact with the anode because this could lead to short circuits and problems with power supply. Hence, our anodes come with a plastic mesh to ensure that there is no contact between the anode and the object. Also, please ensure that the surface area of your anode is not smaller than the surface area of the object you are plating. 
Also, it is worth noting that it is advisable to electroplate in an open air or in a well-ventilated room. This is due to the fact that some processes might be producing harmful gases. All in all, please make sure that every time you are electroplating, you follow health and safety rules. This machine is tested before it is dispatched to you, and we can confirm the high quality of all its components. It can only be damaged in the case when you use a um, current which is too high, or your object is too close to the anode, and this could lead to a short circuit. To avoid this problem, please ensure that when you put your object into the tank with a solution, you first turn the power regulator anti-clockwise to the left furthermost position, so that there is no power supply. Thank you for watching this tutorial, we hope you will find it helpful, and we will also wish you to have a nice electroplating experience.